welcome uh, everybody. I hope you can, uh, I hope you're all joining successfully um, to another Environment and Waste Management Group um, webinar. Um, for those people that have not attended one of our webinars before and aren't quite familiar with the Irish Environment and Waste Management Group, uh, as it stands, I say as it stands because um, there are group um, discussions behind the scenes about how IOS groups can can re um, can be reviewed and changed, and that work is being done by senior officers at IOS. But a bit of a background that traditionally the IOS Environment and Waste Management Group has been um, wearing more than one hat. Its ultimate skill set has always been to, or ultimate purpose has always been, IOS is you know its Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. And the words are safety and health. And so we've been traditionally trying to support people in the environment and waste management sector who have health and safety responsibilities and duties. That's the how it's been. And that's consistent with the other other IOS groups. However, we've all also picked up over the years the fact that we are uh, a number of IOS members have environmental, more specifically probably waste management responsibilities and duties. So we've tried to cater and provide support for those people who do have those duties and we are mindful there are other professional organizations that cover um environment i iema and waste management you've got the chart institute of waste management so we, we are familiar with that and we have working relationships with both of these um professional organizations that no doubt many of you are members of so that's a bit of a background to the rcwmg i'm into my last year as chair we'll be handing over to somebody else at the end of the year for probably somebody on the committee um, what we try to do, we try to run a, a whole range of topics. We have a very short period of time. So what I would suggest is that you, you cannot verbally take part in this, but you can actually chat. So we have a Q&A section for questions and a chat session for chat. What I ask people to do is when you ask a question, please ask a question. Don't say how or how are you. Make sure your question is one that doesn't have a double meaning. It's a single question for a single answer if you can. And, and the chat is not for questions because we will just ignore the questions that, that go into the chat. There's over 280 people in the room. So if you have a question, we know that won't happen. What, I what we will do, um, and I'll pass over to Irfan, who's newly onto the ICWMG, but is leading on this work stream and making the contacts. What we'll do when time tends to run out, we will um, make a note of the questions not answered. And if uh, Amitabab and Irfan are happy, we can actually record a separate Zoom session with just the answers that go on and then post that onto the IOSH website. I've got Dimple in the background as well, Dimple. I think that's what we've done previously in the past, haven't we, for when there have been more questions than time has allowed for an answer. And we will, once the questions come in, we'll, if, if there's two or three similar questions, we will try and lump similar questions together and maybe rephrase it or reword it in our own way. So that's enough about me, and now I'll pass over to Irfan, and it's, the rest of the session is yours. I'll be in the background listening to it, and I might have a question or two as well, but I will do it through the formal route rather than use my role as chair, because you're chair of the day. So I'll leave it over to you, sir. Thank you, David. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Irfan. Um, in a health and safety profession at the moment. Uh, my original career was as a, a designer, and I was working with many operational uh, staff members uh, working on sites and working in production facilities. And um, one of the main questions that was continuously asked is why was a decision of a design made in such a way? It makes our life a lot harder and it's a plant a lot harder to operate and it generates more waste than otherwise could have been uh, created. So throughout my design career, uh, there's been multiple times when I've gone to a drawing board and actually iterated a design working with the operators. Now, in order to achieve this in its best manner possible, there were many practices and tools that were used. Uh, and highest amongst that was Lean and Six Sigma to make sure the plant was operating well, uh, it was safe, it was designed to good quality, uh, and it was made sure that the waste and operational uh, losses were minimized as much as possible. Um, and through that process, I met Mr. Amitabh, uh, a great leader, he gave me a lot of advice and guidance through that process. Uh, and he's helped me actually become a much better designer and much better health and safety practitioner as a result. Uh, so I will introduce him in a moment, but just to give you a bit of a, a background on him, he's got more than 30 years worth of experience in the 
leads the like quality sector. Uh, there are multiple uh, projects, over a thousand, I think, is the thing that I've seen on his website. He's got thousands of uh, green belts, black belts, uh, professionals in the industry to actually become better. Um, I will pass it over to him, and I hope that this session is very informative. Uh, there should be many tools and techniques that he provides. Um, in order to gain the most relevant and most practical examples, there will be a, a poll which asks which sector everyone's part of. Uh, and then depending on how that result comes out, Mr. Amitabh will customize and curate that uh, examples that he gives uh, to actually make it as applicable as possible. So if you can do that in the next two minutes, I'll close the poll and then be able to provide that to him. Uh, thank you very much. And Mr. Amitabh, thank you for your help and assistance in this. Uh, over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Ayush, and uh, I'm, I'm so happy. Thanks, Irfan and David. Uh, I'm so happy to be here because uh, the best way, uh, you know, to, to, to apply your knowledge is to, uh, you know, spread the knowledge. And the uh, more you spread, more you gain. So here am I, and uh, uh, please answer this poll. Uh, which industry do you belong to? So I see construction and others. Uh, others are like quite a few. Okay, so oil and gas, healthcare is 5%. Uh, Okay, and uh, we have uh, uh, fine. So uh, I'll just give another 15 seconds to uh, answer the question and uh, thanks a lot. So I can see that uh, people are from uh, various industries and maybe then in that case, I'll stick to some generic examples, not specific to one industry. So some of the examples which I would in be including would be from uh, 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 will be such that they're uh, applicable to all industries. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, I'll just share my screen and I hope you are able to see my screen now. Just give me one minute. Yeah. Yes. So welcome once again. And uh, the agenda for the day, or for, for, the, for the hour, for the, <laughs> for the next one hour or 45 minutes is, uh, this and uh, uh, just to tell about the organization we have been around for 16 years and personally have 32 years of experience i uh, trained more than 150,000 uh, people around the world like uh, basically chemical engineer mba finance six sigma master, master black belt cphq pmp data scientist uh, ai artificial intelligence trainer etc i also write poetry <laughs> in a spare time <laughs> and Okay, and uh, I've consulted lots and lots of organizations and spoken in many conferences around the world, written a book as well. Uh, yeah, th this is my London program because I, I, you're based in the UK, so I remembered my program 20 years ago. This was the first program I conducted, I still remember. And yeah, since then I've been doing quite a few programs in Middle East and uh, uh, Europe and uh, uh, across the industries, won some awards, etc. And uh, yeah, so this one, National Healthcare Service. Now, Lean and Six Sigma is uh, applicable to all industries. So I see a lot of people from construction. So I'll try to give uh, later on some construction related examples as well. But well, we have Alex with us so, and he has done excellent Lean and Six Sigma projects in National Healthcare Service and uh, in hospitals. So Alex, would you like to tell us some, something about it? Hello, I'm, I'm Alex Wells, Head of Service Improvements at the Royal Liverpool University Hospital. Now, the, the reason I want you to show this video is that uh, how Lean and Six Sigma can help. Now, rather than I speaking uh, about it, and of course, I'm going to speak about it, uh, but uh, let's see what happens if you apply Lean and Six Sigma, uh, in this case, to healthcare. That's all. Um, I've been really fortunate to present today on how us as a trust are using Lean and Six Sigma principles to deliver better care for our patients. Um, I've presented today on a lot of the work that we've done around how we've improved patient outcomes, reducing mortality, improving length of stay, and also talked about how we can actually realise some financial benefits from that. Over the past two years, we've been really fortunate that we've done some good work, and it's actually delivered us £2 million worth of quality efficiencies through delivering better patient care. So Lean Six Sigma is about... Uh... Lean Six Sigma is about improving efficiency and reducing the costs and improving the profitability. And this is true for all industries. 
of course, not to talk about this, the safety. Safety part is most critical, and we'll be touching upon that a little bit as well as we proceed. Uh, but as I uh, told you earlier, my examples will be generic in nature. So what do you think? Uh, can you find some similarities here? A construction company reduces project delays by 30%. Uh, hospital uh, reduces uh, patient discharge time by 80%. Construction waste reduced by 10%. Petrochemical company reduces lost time accidents. Reports generation time reduced to half and project implementation time reduced by 20%. So can you see, can, can you write, and I'll just see in the chat box, or, and I see that, uh, yeah, so can you, can you write in the chat box, what are the similarities you see here? Reduced waste, okay. Yeah, so Edwin said reduced waste reduction. Yes, Fatima, you're right. So almost all of you are right. Time and resources reduced, absolutely. And uh, yes. And one more thing, one more common thing is they are all Lean Six Sigma projects. So when you implement Lean and Six Sigma, now if someone asks me, in three sentences, tell me what is Lean, and in three sentences, what is Six Sigma? I would say lean is map the process as it is. As it is means we call it as Gemba investigation. Gemba means go to the field, go where the action is, go to the place of action, map the process and identify the waste in the, uh, in the process. And I'll tell you, we are talking about the eight waste, the seven or eight waste, which uh, I'll be spending around 10 to 15 minutes uh, after a while. So reduce the waste and reduce the errors, thereby improving the safety as well by using pokayoke. Pokayoke is a, a mistake proofing technique. Briefly, I will even talk about that as well. That is lean. And what is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is about reducing the variation in the process. And when you combine the two, it becomes a very powerful technique or methodology to reduce the costs, reduce the defects, reduce the waste in the system. And we are not talking about the waste which is thrown uh, into the just dustbin. We are talking about the waste which is present in our processes. So reduce the rework, reduce the cycle time, improving the safety, quality, production efficiency, productivity, customer satisfaction, capacity, profitability, and resilience. Now, which CEO would not like a person who can do all these things? It just sounds like magic. How is it possible? Well, let me tell you first uh, the history, how it uh, started, all started. So uh, in, uh, somewhere in 1979, in one of the board meetings, uh, one of the directors commented that the real problem in Motorola is that uh, our quality stinks. And uh, Bob Galvin, the CEO, took this as a challenge, and he said that he would achieve five-fold improvement in the span of five years. And he invited suggestions. And Bill Smith and Michael Harry, the two engineers, uh, suggested that why don't we apply statistical tools and techniques to improve our processes? Now, Bob Galvin couldn't understand much. So he said, can you explain this? And then they showed him some projects. Now, Bill Smith and Michael Harry uh, used to do improvement projects. Now, what is the basic definition of a project? The basic definition of a project is it has a starting point. It has an end point. Uh, I think almost everyone understands that. And as, especially the people, my friends from the construction industry, so many of them are there. They would definitely uh, uh, know this uh, definition, the basic definition of project. So it, a project is a one-time activity or one-time uh, endeavor. And uh, Bill Smith and Michael already said that we are doing improvement projects. So whatever we want to improve, Suppose I want to reduce lost time hours in the, due to the accidents or unsafe practices. Uh, we can say that today it is X, X hours, and we would like to reduce it to maybe uh, X minus, say, say, 100 hours, or we would like to reduce them by 10% or 20% by the end of three months. So this is what a basic definition of a project would be. Now, Bill Smith and Michael Harry were doing some projects. They said that, if we train the employees in these tools and techniques, they would be capable of doing the same thing and uh, 
Bob Gelwin agreed to this proposal and he said, yes, go ahead. And they started training the people. They started training the people, their own, uh, the, the employees in the company. And uh, those who would learn these tools and techniques, they would be called as uh, black belts, lean Six Sigma black belts. Uh, earlier it was Six Sigma black belt. Uh, lean uh, has been like, uh, was born in Toyota. And uh, uh, nowadays, every time uh, everyone combines lean and Six Sigma, we call it the lean and Six Sigma. GE was, uh, GE also adopted it after seeing uh, uh, it succeed in Motorola. And uh, GE's Jack Welch told his employees that uh, I'm not going to promote you if you are not a green belt. So you have to be a, uh, you know, minimum a green belt uh, to get uh, even qualified for a promotion. So everyone wanted to become a green belt and they started doing lots of projects after that. Uh, Jack Welch also told his uh, suppliers that uh, if you want to uh, win business with, uh, from GE, uh, you have to implement Lean and Six Sigma. So that's how uh, you know, Lean and Six Sigma spread out across the world. Now, let us start from the basics. Uh, think of your organization. You can think of your core process, uh, whatever, uh, you know, think of, uh, let's say, think of an output your organization produces. It could be a product or it could be a service. So output is always a product or a service. And it is always a result of some processes. What is a process? When you repeat certain steps, when you repeat certain steps again and again and again and again. So that's what that must be happening in your organization too. So you are repeating certain steps again and again and again and again, and you're continuously delivering an output. It could be a product or a service. Of course, by using certain inputs. This could be raw material, it could be uh, people, it could be information, uh, it, it could be uh, requirements, uh, anything. Try to think of your own organization. I'm not taking any specific example here. So inputs being converted to output through a series of process steps. Yeah. Now what I'm going to uh, make here is a generic model of all the organizations in the world. Yeah, so think of your organization. I, I, I hope you, you have done that. Now, your outputs are going to the customers. Your outputs, they're going to the customers. And customers are giving you some feedback or maybe the demand. They told you, they tell you that, well, I'll need uh, this much of material, or I will need this. Much, the, the, you know, I can. The, the, the forecast. There is a forecast saying that, oh, well, I will need uh, these kinds of services uh, in this quantity. So, this will be analyzed by your uh, central team. It could be control team. It could be CEO's office. It could be R and D team. It could be a planning team, and based on uh, what is needed, they will ask the suppliers to supply the respective inputs. And uh, of course, they will also tell the respective departments. So the, let's say this is department one, department two, department three, department four, and department five, which are carrying out these, uh, the, the activities of the process. Uh, if, if change in policy and procedures is required, they will communicate to these departments if change uh, in uh, raw material is required, they will be communicating, uh, communicating, communicating this to the suppliers. And that's how the whole system operates. And this is how every organization operates. So we operate in a system. And uh, this kind of uh, uh, outlook, this kind of thought is known as systems thinking, uh, propagated by Deming. Of course, Forrester uh, had given this for the first time, but it was like popularized by uh, Dr. Edward Deming. And uh, now, if you just uh, take out S, I, and this is P, P, O, and C, uh, we also get a tool called SIPOC, S-I-P-O-C. So whenever you want to improve anything, the first thing a Lean Six Sigma green belt or a black belt does is they make a SIPOC. Now you might, uh, ask me who's a green belt, who's a black belt, and what is the yellow belt. So very briefly, I, I'll just tell you, yellow belts are the people who are aware of the tools and techniques, the basic tools and techniques of the whole process. 
uh, of process improvement. Green belts have learned and practiced these tools the way now you are learning some tool, you're just getting aware of this, uh, these tools. Uh, after say 45 minutes, you can consider yourself to be a white belt. Okay, so white belt means you, you, you're just aware of uh, you know, these tools and techniques, the basic awareness is uh, there with you, but uh, uh, yellow belts are the people who have seen some of the applications. Green belts uh, are, are those who have practiced these tools and uh, they, have, uh, they, they also can uh, apply these tools and techniques to improve their processes. And the black belts are, uh, they can also do the same thing, but they know some more advanced tools. They, are, they, know, they know some you know, highly advanced statistical tools and techniques. So this is how yellow, green, black, you know, the, 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 the different kinds of belts exist if you are implementing Lean and Six Sigma in an organization. Now, what do they do? They make a systems map, and this is known as value stream map, VSM, commonly known as VSM. Now, when you see your whole organization as a system, and I'm not, uh, by the way, uh, uh, even you can make this uh, value stream map for your own department as well. So it's not that you have to make a VSM only for, a, for the whole organization. I just took an example of the organization, but uh, it, you can make a VSM for your own department. In fact, you can even make a value stream map for, uh, as an individual. You are also, you know, you're, you're doing, you're, you're responsible for certain activities. You know, you are uh, uh, responsible for following certain processes day in and day out. You have your customers, maybe family members, your boss, etc. They are your customers. And you do the planning in your brain. And that is your central team. And then you go to the suppliers to, to seek information and raw materials and so that you can carry out all the activities uh, which are required for your... Uh, uh, well-being and existence. So you yourself can make a system map uh, uh, of yourself as an individual too. So VSM leads to systems thinking, means you are thinking as a whole rather than parts. This is known as systems thinking. Now, so I will leave uh, these, it means uh, we'll be circulating these slides uh, uh, to you at a later stage. So you can read it out uh, at a later stage, but I'll just explain uh, uh, the, the values, uh, uh, what, what exactly systems map or systems thinking is. Some of the benefits are also enlisted here. Uh, so once you understand the big picture, you would avoid excessive attention to a single part. And what you can do is now you can identify is there any flow in the system or not? What is a flow? Flow means information, raw material, outputs to the customers and that feedback is continuously flowing through the system without much interruption. It is not getting stuck anywhere. But as soon as you see that it is getting stuck somewhere, you will get a buildup of inventory. As soon as you see that some mistakes or errors are happening, this will lead to downtime. You know, it could in, uh, include uh, unsafe practices. Now these mistakes, delays, inventory, work in progress, waiting time, they would be visible in your system and whenever there is no continuous flow in the system, we say that, you know, let, let me compare it with, let, let's say when, when, you, when you are not well, uh, your breathing uh, gets obstructed. You know, it's, it's not continuous, not, it doesn't flow so smoothly. Similarly, uh, so, so just imagine the organization, if it is continuously operating, it's like breathing continuously with a flow, nice flow, there are no diseases. But mistakes, delays, inventory, everything, uh, you know, is, is like a disease of an organization or, or, or a department whenever there is an obstruction in the flow. So how would you identify that? You can identify them using, uh, first by understanding what is a waste, what obstructs the flow. So there are eight wastes. In a short while, I'll be speaking about it. But uh, let me uh, quickly tell you what uh, 
and, and, and against the system thinking, what is silo thinking? Silo thinking is also important. Thinking about your own department, thinking about your own work, which is also important. But uh, it may happen that you optimize your department. You know, you are working at, let's say, you know, if I go back uh, and I'll just uh, take this idea. So maybe you are operating at 100% efficiency here, 100% efficiency here, and 60% efficiency here. Okay. Or time taken to complete this job is, uh, let's say, I'm just taking an example, uh, uh, two hours, two hours, and this is eight hours. What will happen? You can see a buildup of work in process, and it will lead to waiting time. This is a waste. So you would like to balance the line. Now you would like to uh, you know, ensure either you speed this up. Let's say this is A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, you would like to speed this up. So rather than trying to improve the whole system, rather than trying to improve department A and B, et cetera, focus all your efforts on C. That is known as theory of constraints given by Goldrack. He, he had written a book. Uh, I, I, maybe I'm not sure if you've read that book. Anyone has read, just let me know. Um, yeah, so it, it, it says the title of the book is The Goal. Yeah. So uh, he, he has given some good examples and how he, he used uh, uh, to improve the productivity in his uh, organization by just taking some day-to-day -day examples. So there is no point in improving A and B unless you improve C. So that is why value stream mapping will be able to identify this and if you're you're having silo thinking you may keep improving your department that but that may not be of any use to, to your organization so focus on the process rather than the departments because functions should be the residence of competencies but robust processes are crucial for the achievement of the strategic goals so the customers look at your organization as a process not departments. You may complete, you, you may be really good at every place, but customer may tell you that I get my delivery in 20 days. Uh, you know, you, you, uh, a department may say I complete the job in one hour, uh, one hour, two hours, maybe one hour and two hours, but the customer gets the service in eight days. So that means that there is a lot of waiting time in the, in between the departments and Process thinking, that is why we say process excellence would lead to improvement of customer satisfaction. So it will have a lot of benefits if you break the silo approach. Now, how to do this? Like you know, talking about philosophy is one thing, but how to make it happen? So what we do is we try to implement projects, we try to do projects. So whatever you want to improve in your organization, you try to convert them into projects. Okay, one more uh, uh, slide before I move on to the DMAC. Uh, see, nowadays, uh, you, you don't have much, the price is fixed by the market. Earlier, it used to be you had a cost, you put some 10% profit, and you decide your sales price and you get your profits. But now the price is already fixed by the market. So if you want to increase the profit, you have to reduce the cost and costs can be reduced by reducing the waste in the system. Now, how would you do that? So most popular approach is DMAC, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. DMAC. Okay. DMAC. DMAC, what is DMAC? So whatever you want to improve, whatever you want to improve. Now, uh, uh, if someone would like to mention quickly in the chat box, like what you what you would like to improve uh, in your organization, if you can just write in the chat box and I'll pick up any one improvement aspects and I'll try to do a DMAC project in the next 15 minutes. Okay, so, uh, and can you be more specific? And since Simon is telling everything, <laughs> salary, <laughs> okay, okay, fine. So can you be more specific, like, uh, uh, so, so, so that it becomes a project? So, 
So, uh, uh, yeah, so reducing accidents by 25%, I think I can take that as an example, or last time accidents or last time hours. Okay. Permit to work process. Okay, work permit process. Well, reducing time, reducing reworks. Yeah, so I have two, three examples, very good examples now. Uh, someone's telling reducing the procurement time. Okay. So let me take, uh, so improving safety culture. So, 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 so let's say uh, you want to uh, reduce the procurement time. Let, let's, let, let's take one example. I want to reduce the, pro so, so I'll take two examples now. So a brief example of, let us say, uh, uh, reducing the 25% uh, 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 accidents by 25%, right? So the first thing is you define the problem very clearly. So here you will define the problem, form a team of green belt and assign this project to a green belt or a black belt. Now this green belt would be trained for three to four days. Right? And I've been doing this for the last 22 years, training green belts and black belts across many organizations. Now I would train, so, so uh, you know, I, I, could, I could see so many, uh, so many, uh, employee engagement and decision making, reducing the rework. Uh, uh, and the, the best part about Lean Six Sigma is it can handle all of them simultaneously. So the, the people who suggested that I would like to improve the safety culture, they get the project of improving the safety culture. Then the people who want to um, uh, improve the invoicing process, uh, uh, I think Scott uh, has written invoicing process. I would give Scott a lean and successful on project to improve the invoicing. Then, um, uh, and I said, uh, Mohammed uh, is telling uh, safety culture. So you get that project. And airport passenger queues. Okay, so Stephen, you get that project to reduce the queues at, or reduce the queue waiting time. And that's what I think you mean. And the best part is the first thing, like first we define the problem. And second thing is you have to collect the data. Now collect the data. So first thing is you have to measure your problem. Now whatever can be the problem, whatever could be the problem, you have to measure. Now there are two types of, uh, how, uh, now you have to believe uh, in two or rather than three rules. The first rule is you can't improve if you cannot uh, measure. And that second rule is you can me measure everything. And the third rule is, if you think something cannot be measured, go back to rule number two. That means everything can be measured, right? Now, how, you, you would ask me, how can I measure everything? So let me uh, briefly tell you, how can you measure everything? Sometimes we feel, uh, by the way, do you agree that everything can be measured? If you can just tell me yes or no. Certainly. Oh, yes. Everyone now agrees with me. Okay. So how? Tell me how. <laughs> okay. So there are two types of data. I can measure it either as continuous data. So there are two types of data, continuous data or attribute data. Yeah. So continuous data is very easy, like uh, uh, lost time hours uh, due to unsafe practices. Let's say last month, it was, uh, let's say, um, in a large construction company, let's say uh, it was uh, 102.5 hours. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a continuous data. Continuous data uh, typically would always have a, have a unit and it would always have a decimal point, you know. Uh, queue waiting time. You know, I think one of you wanted queue waiting time, queue waiting time to be reduced. Yeah, so queue waiting time today, uh, let's say in, in boarding process, I think security, uh, uh, security check at the airport, right? Uh, it's totally, let's say you collect the data and you find that average on an average, the queue waiting time is uh, 20.2 minutes. So here also you can see you have a unit and you have a decimal place. Now the attribute data is something which is categorical in nature. 
So have an attribute. I would have a category. Yeah. Now safety culture. Safety culture, how would you measure? Now, there are various ways of measuring safety culture. But the simplest, now I'm talking about simple because I, there's not much enough time. So I want to be as brief as possible. The most important, and oh yeah, Caroline is right, liquor scale. The most, see, the, 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 the easiest way to measure any attribute data is just create minimum two categories. Minimum two categories, uh, categories are uh, uh, you know, always possible. So say safety culture. So liquor uh, scale would be really good. Like you can have five scales. Oh, very, very good, good, uh, fine, uh, not good, and extremely poor. So this could be a good one. But I'm just taking an example quickly. And just to be quick, uh, good and poor. I can have two categories. And I check the opinion of, let's say, 100 employees in my company. And, uh, or it could be some features. I'm just being very brief here. I could have assigned some attributes, what's good and what's bad. And on that basis, I can you know, make my judgment. And I find that uh, 16 instances, it is good and 14 instances, it is bad. So I get my proportion. Okay. And I say that, well, now uh, to, to, to do a project, to do a project, I really need to measure. So if I'm uh, talking about uh, uh, waiting time, I would say today the waiting time is 30 minutes and I would like to reduce this 30 minutes to 20 minutes. That's how I'll define my problem. And uh, uh, let's say I want to improve the safety culture uh, on the basis of some survey or some features or some attributes. I found we are at 60% and we would like to move from 60% to 80%. So this is how we will create a project charter. Once we create a project chart, so, okay, so I, let me, let me, you know, describe in defined phase, as I said, I create a project chart, problem statement, goal statement, and a timeline. And then I make a CIPOC, CIPOC of that process in which I want to have improvements. Once I do that, I understand the system. Now I'm focusing on the system. I'm focusing on the process, not on the problem because problems are in the processes. 85% of the problems are due to the processes and 15% are contributed by people. This was uh, uh, told by Dr. Edward Deming uh, around 80 years ago. And uh, all the uh, quality fraternity believes in that, that 85% of the problems are in the processes. So focus on the processes, so I'll draw my CIPOC. And after that, I'll start measuring. Once I start measuring, I would, uh, display my charts, the histograms, uh, the, the control charts. Uh, if you want to uh, understand, uh, I also conduct a free yellow belt training program. Uh, my team uh, would uh, maybe, you know, uh, towards the end of the session, they would give the link. Uh, you can join that free yellow belt training program. It's a two and a half hour uh, training where I talk about all these tools uh, in a little bit more details. Right now, I'm just giving you the synopsis. So. Uh, so, so you, you plot your histograms and tell how your process looks like today, and then also map the process as is by doing GEMBA investigation. GEMBA means go to the field, go where the action is. Once you have measured, and that was, so we have defined, we have measured, so we know what is the problem. Now we know why is the problem, sorry, we know how big is the problem, what is the extent of the problem. Now it's time to know why is the problem. So I go to the root cause. I try to you know, uh, generate uh, uh, some, I do some brainstorming and maybe I'll use a fishbone diagram and I, I, I do some root cause analysis like using Pareto chart, 80-20 principle. Wilfredo Pareto was an Italian economist who found that 80% of the uh, uh, wealth is with 20% uh, of the people. And uh, Joseph Duran, he applied this quality and he said, 80% of your problem, whatever you are trying to improve, is due to only 20% of the factors. 
we call them X factors. And this we call it as Y. And we say Y is function of X. We say Y is function of X. Means rather than focusing on the Y, on the output measure, try to focus on the inputs. So rather than now focusing only on the safety culture, the safety culture is influenced by different X factors. Try to enlist those X factors and find out which top 20% of these X factors are impacting your safety culture or would, would improve your safety culture and focus on that. Or if you are trying to reduce the, uh, like the waiting time in the queue or lost time hours in the accidents, same, same is true. Uh, even you can do a cause and effect diagram or you can apply a Pareto analysis. Then you move on further. So here, uh, it just in detail, we do a cause and effect diagram. We also do, we do some high-end tools. We learn high-end tools like regression, uh, box plots and scatter plots, et cetera, which will enable you to statistically validate, statistically validate that, yes, this is the root cause because you should be 95% confident uh, before you take any action on uh, a particular cause because taking an action on a cause is going to uh, involve some investments and uh, some uh, real good change management. And you should be rather sure before you try to you know, uh, you know, take some action. Uh, if, when you are trying to make changes in the process, better be careful. So you need to be a 95% confidence. And here comes your, uh, the hypothesis test to your rescue. And once you, once you are sure, pretty sure that yes, this is the root cause. These are the top 20% or these are the validated root causes of my problem. You take actions on them in the improve phase and you reduce your problems and reduce uh, and you try to achieve the goals set up in your project charter. Uh, typically, you, you would be able to achieve the goals and if not, at least even a good improvement will help you to, uh, you know, uh, uh, it will, will be good enough. You know, any, any statistically significant improvement is going to benefit the organization. It's, it's going to save the costs. And, uh, and finally, the control phase, DMAIC, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. In the control phase, you would like to sustain the gains. Uh, you should not go back to your old habits. So you would put some reviews, uh, systems in place, you would put up the new process map, you will train the people, um, you will uh, use some control charts, a very, very powerful concept called control charts. Uh, I would have loved to talk about control charts if I had an hour, half an hour more, but uh, this is a like short and sweet, uh, you know, a DMAC for you, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. In fact, uh, still, uh, 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 you know, I, I, I'm really, uh, yeah, so so th this is what DMAC is for you. Now, if the time permits, after talking about the eight ways, if still the time permits, uh, what I would do is uh, I will uh, try to show you some examples uh, uh, of uh, data analysis, but r let me quickly talk about eight ways because I would also like you uh, to, to ask some questions and I like to answer your questions too. So eight ways, what are the eight ways? Now, what is the way, what is a waste? Waste is a non-value added activity in your process. The basic definition of non-value added activity is if the customers are not willing to pay for it, if it doesn't physically change the product you know, and brings it closer to the output, and if it is not done right the first time, anything starting with re, review, rework, these are all wastes in the system. So, some of the examples are unsafe practices, defects, errors, omissions. Now, how to brainstorm on these? So you have got, uh, oh, by the way, in Japanese, we call waste as muda, okay? So to, to remember the waste, you can remember downtime, defects, overproduction, waiting, non-utilized talent, transportation, inventory, motion, and extra processing, downtime. Uh, defects, yeah, I think everyone would agree. Any error defect is a waste. It doesn't add any value to the, you, you're wasting time in you know, making a mistake and then correcting it. Uh, overproduction, producing more than required, waiting, it's pure waste. Non-utilized talent, not adequately leveraging people's skills and creativity. 
So you hire a PhD person and give him data entry job. That's a waste of his talent. Unnecessary transportation or work in process inventory or finished good inventory or raw material inventory, too much because you want to create buffer stock. These are all examples of waste. Motion, extra processing. Now, uh, I see that actually I had some examples from both uh, healthcare and construction, but I see more of construction people. So I'll just quickly go to the examples of construction rather than spending time on uh, healthcare. But let, let, let me, like just two, three minutes on healthcare. So if you map the process, you will find surprisingly only 20% of the steps are value added and remaining are non value added. So, this is just a quick example. Two steps in the whole process are value added. So, try to identify if you, uh, you know, the idea is to reduce the waste as much as possible so that you create value for the customer. Now, understand the value is from the customer's perspective, not from your perspective. That is important. You may think this step is required. But you have to think from customer's perspective and list down all your non-value added activities. Like some more examples in healthcare would be a necessary process, motion, waiting. Uh, you know, uh, very quickly, I'll just rush through this. Walk to elevator, you know, even walking, <laughs> you know, sometimes maybe. And this is true for all organization. You know, everyone, every organization has an elevator. So elevator or lift. So uh, it, it is like moving. If you just carefully calculate, it leads to lots of waste. Now, one more thing, uh, I'll just quickly move on to one more topic called pokayoke. Pokayoke is a concept. Pokayoke in Japanese means a mistake proofing, uh, sometimes also known as fool proofing. Fool proofing means even by mistake, you should not be committing a mistake. So, design a system such that uh, if you try to commit a mistake, the system prevents you, either prevents you uh, uh, from committing a mistake or at least gives you a warning. Or if uh, still you're not listening, then it will stop the system. Uh, that, that's what is pokayoke or mistake proofing. Some examples of, uh, you know, uh, in healthcare would be these, um, you know, uh, even by mistake, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, you cannot put uh, incorrect values. Uh, I, I'll, uh, in, uh, by mistake also you cannot connect oxygen to nitrogen because your connections uh, they don't match you know you should not forget anything uh, during the surgery inside the patient's body so you have got fixed number of packages and complete uh, catheter grids uh, etc so these are all examples of waste uh, in in a construction we have got uh, um, any rework so design error what we call it as your errors are designed in your processes. See, the, the, the employees are just going to follow. The employees are just going to follow. Any, if you see some accidents happening, they are designed in your processes. Surprisingly, no, no, no employee comes to the work saying that, well, you know, I'll meet with an accident today or I would uh, commit mistakes or uh, I would uh, delay uh, you know, things for the, uh, for the customers. No employee comes to, to, come, comes to uh, the organization thing like that. But once he follows the steps, it leads to, it leads to errors. Okay, so better change the design. And that is why process is important. Focus on the process. Similarly, transportation. You will find, you know, uh, uh, we, we do something called a spaghetti diagram. Uh, look at your uh, organization and you'll find, uh, track the movements of people. You will find a lot of movements happening like this, a little bit of movement here. So in this case, what happens? You can see that so much of movement between, let's say, A, B, C, so A and C. So bring A and C closer together, change the layout. Also, this transportation waste is true for even between sub customers and suppliers too. Overproduction, producing more than required, is a waste. You know, in construction, it's really uh, you 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 make more residential uh, apartments than required. You know what happens. Uh, extra processing, like uh, gilding the lily. You know, there's no point in gold plating the lily if because it's already beautiful. So, uh, you know, it's a waste. Waiting is a waste. Inventory, 
is a waste. Transportation, as I said. So typical benefits of lean thinking would be improved safety, reduced lean time, less rework, financial savings, increased process understanding and reduced inventory. So on that note, I think uh, I'll also tell you to go through one more very, very nice way of uh, improving the safety practices in your organization would be failure modes and effects analysis. Now, FME is a very, very good tool to improve safety in organizations. Uh, I would have loved to talk about it and take an example, but it would take it would have taken half an hour to 45 minutes just to explain the FMEA. So those who are interested, they can uh, click on a link. I'll be sending this link to you later on. Uh, and this will uh, give you the whole process of how to do an FMEA. And it also gives you a template. If you go on the uh, site, it also gives you a template. And you can quickly do... Uh, uh, an FME, failure modes and effects analysis. You imagine how you will fail. You imagine how an accident will occur and take a preventive measure, FME, a very, very powerful tool. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, leave uh, you and uh, uh, leave, the, uh, like, like leave uh, the floor open for uh, the questions. So any questions, please. And also stay connected with me uh, as you ask questions. And I'll have a look at the Q and A now. If there yeah. are, <clears throat> Hi everyone, yeah, please ask any questions um, if you have them. Uh, I'll ask Mr. Amitabh. Um, so we had two questions which were uh, in the uh, question Q and A section. Uh, one was, could Six Sigma techniques be applied to carbon reduction? Uh, yeah. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, could Six Sigma techniques be applied to carbon reduction? Uh, causal reduction. Carbon reduction, carbon. Carbon, of course, of course, carbon reduction. Yes, of course, of course. Yes. First of all, you know, I, I would always answer the question by just going back to DMAC and try to fit the DMAC here. The So I'll quickly give an answer. Now, what I, how I, I would do, uh, uh, approach this. First of all, in Lean Six Sigma, we don't try to boil the ocean or we don't try to solve world hunger. So I would specify the project, carbon reduction and which process. So let's say I have decided like, you know, in, in my organization, uh, the carbon uh, emission, carbon emission, uh, that's what, I, am, am I right? Carbon? You, carbon? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Right. So the carbon emissions are uh, this much, right? And I would like to re reduce. So uh, typically I'll do a control charts. You know, typically your carbon, uh, ca carbon uh, emissions are somewhere here. And I would like to reduce it to somewhere here. Okay. So first I'll collect the data. I'll collect the data. I'll draw my histograms and uh, you know, control charts. And they say that, well, I'm here today. And to move here, I would again, do a cause and effect diagram. I'll find that out of so many reasons, it could be leakages. I, I, I'm really not sure which industry uh, this uh, like the question could be a specific question for an industry, but it could be leakage. It could be uh, uh, too, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the too much of burning of too much of whatever. Uh, you will definitely find some X, X factors. Uh, and here my Y is high carbon emissions. So specific to that particular industry, I will identify the X factors, uh, do my uh, uh, Pareto chart, Pareto chart, and I'll find that out of the hundred causes which have been listed in the phase uh, in the cause and effect diagram, maybe four to five are really responsible. But I would not take an action just like that. What I would do is I will plot my charts and uh, something like this. So high carbon emissions. Maybe uh, due to, uh, like say, uh, if I'm talking about, let's say a, a manufacturing organization, the set temperature of the process, is it related to that? So I can get my temperature. At this temperature, I get my lowest emissions. Maybe this is this would be my set point in the improved phase. 
or it could be due to different reasons. So what I am doing, I am validating my root causes, taking an action on the validated root causes, I am, I am more likely to reduce my carbon emissions. So that was a very, very quick, brief answer uh, to that question. So the answer is yes, of course, yes. And we have do done it. We have done it uh, for some of the petrochemical organizations. Uh, just to tell you, Aramco and Ednoc, both the, the, the biggest petrochemical, uh, petrochemical companies in the Middle East, they are my clients. And we have done some projects related to this as well. Um, next question, uh, difference between green belt and black belt, and how long does it take to become a black belt? Yeah, so nowadays uh, we, we have a plan to lean to even uh, to, to lean Six Sigma training. So earlier it used to be two weeks to become a, a, let's say black belt, one week for green belt, like five days of training as a green belt, and five more days after green belt, uh, you know, you, you have to, you know, you would be learning some hypothesis test and uh, regression and uh, ANOVA and chi-square, which takes a little time. So typically 10 days it would take, but now what uh, we have done is uh, this, the, the trainings, like the, the way I conduct my trainings, uh, three days of classroom sessions and uh, around one, one and a half day of self-study. Uh, it is not a self-study. It's like a again, exercises, apart from after the after you attend the classroom sessions, uh, you do some exercises. If you can yourself, uh, you can do that. Or uh, we have a team, we have study groups, and they meet together, and then they apply, they do projects. So you start applying these tools and techniques, whatever you are learning, uh, to, to a particular project of your choice. So just to answer a question, uh, three days you have to attend a live session. If I, if, like, I'm just giving an example. If you were to join my training, it's a three days of training and uh, or as a green belt and three days of training as a black belt. Plus approximately you have to invest one to two days uh, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in completing the project, either with us, uh, with our study group, or you can do it in, uh, uh, independently as well. Okay, thank you very much. I think for me, with my Black Belt project it took about three months uh, because yeah. it was a very big detailed project. So, I mean, every person is specific and uh, it depends on the data you can collect, uh, but it, the output from that was very valuable to the organization. So it's just, uh, it's very specific to whichever project you want to utilize. Um, the next one was, have you heard of Simplar? Uh, do you find the approach correct? Uh, maybe, I, I may not be able to, uh, comment on that uh, much because uh, I'll have to check out on that. So yeah, that's. I think that's about it in terms of questions. Uh, Mr. Amitabh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, this is a very brief introduction, but there's so many different uh, tools and techniques that can be utilized as part of Six Sigma. Uh, again, to improve the safety of any organization. And it really does allow you to actually look at other organization critically and improve the processes that cause waste and processes that cause uh, safety issues in the organization. Mr. Amitabh, thank you very much for your time. Um, again, there's many more sessions linked to this. The FMEA one is very, very useful. Uh, would definitely recommend looking at the link and actually looking at the videos. Um, Mr. Amitabh will be sharing that information with uh, everyone at IOSH. It will be put onto the website uh, and shared directly through there. Um, thank you all very much for your time. I think we'll be wrapping up the session here. And Mr. Amitabh, thank you very much for being the very gracious host. Uh, your time is really appreciated and we really appreciate what you've provided for us. Uh, so everybody, thank you. Um, and that's the end of the webinar.